and welcome to Book Time with Ryan. I am Ryan, and today I'm going to be doing a special tour. This is a tour of my Sumar collection. Collection. It is a collection of a collection. I'm going to go through books, give you a little bit of history of how this started. It started with books, and then I'm going to go into the other things because the collection expanded. I'll give you a little bit of history on who created this collection, a little bit on the books, and I'm going to show you the inside of the books, more detail of the playing cards and a poster. And then there are CDs and records involved in this collection that you don't really need to see more detail of. So I'll hold those up. But what is the Sumara collection? Many years ago, there was a Japanese businessman very high up in the business world in Japan named Akira Sumara who collected things. He was really into jazz. He went to school in the United States, um, got really into jazz, and played the banjo. He played a, a four-string banjo in a Dixieland jazz band uh, that he created called the Storyville Dandies. And I believe they were out of Louisiana, I think. But I'm not 100% sure of that. Akira Sumara really got into banjos, like one of the supreme collector. And his banjo collection was second to none. Uh, but he also had other collections. Guitars, Louis Armstrong albums. And he started showing these collections in books. In 2014, I started playing the banjo. I joined an online forum called the Banjo Hangout. On the Banjo Hangout, I kept hearing about this, this book called 1001 Banjos, a Samara Collection. And it was considered really the greatest book of banjos in the world, I decided I was going to buy one. Now they were pricey, very pricey, but it's a 20 pound book. It's huge and it comes in a leatherette clamshell box. The book is amazing. The photos are amazing. The, even the box is beautiful. Um, it's considered banjo porn. If you're a banjo fan, it's kind of the ultimate thing to look at. You know, besides banjos, his collection was amazing. And it wasn't just five strings or four strings. Now he, he, he focused a lot on four string banjos, but he has some extremely hard to find, extremely expensive. We're talking $250,000, $350,000 banjos. That's one banjo. And he even had, when we think of banjos, we think of four strings. We really think of five strings probably typically. Sometimes six strings banjotars, which are basically banjos that are strung like guitars. But included in... Akira Sumara's collection were many other banjo examples with different stringing setups. Nine string banjos, more, even more than that. He goes really far back in his collection to some of the earliest banjos you can find. The first book that I'm going to show you, 1001 Banjos of Sumara Collection, was published in 1993. Out of all the banjo books, it is the greatest. 2,500 of these books were made. At the time, I think they cost. Five hundred or a thousand dollars to make of each, and some of them Akira Sumar gave away. Others became available for sale. This is the first book that I got. Once I got this book, I started finding out about other books that he had about his collections, and that's where it went from there. So, the first book is this twenty-pound tome. This is one thousand one banjos, a Sumar collection. This is the clamshell box. It's very heavy. The um, actual book is beautiful too. Oh my gosh, it's heavy. I just dropped the box. This is the book. Actually, sprayed edge on one end, but you can see it's it's a thick, thick book. So we'll look more in depth with that. Just amazing cover. The box is beautiful. Everything about this book is amazing. The quality of the paper on the inside. It's, it's just amazing. So let's take a look at that now. The big book. The clamshell box is a beautiful box. You can see here, this is a 20 pound book. It's super, super heavy. And inside this is the book, but you can also see that this is a pretty amazing clamshell box too. This is the big book. Some of the most beautiful pictures, well done, they're huge. And it's just, it's second to none. It goes by maker. The kind of banjos in here, there's some really old stuff. Beautiful stuff. New stuff, I mean, relatively new stuff. 
These are the American Classic banjos. Um, these are six string banjos. Amer uh, English Zither banjos. Go further back and we'll find stuff from there's late, late Victorian. Even older than that, these are minstrel air banjos. I just, it's amazing stuff. And this is a huge book. This is how big my arm is. It's, it's a giant book. It's heavy. It's so complete. And you just have these really interesting designs for banjos over the years. And as we go closer to the front, you get older and older banjos, more basic banjos, different designs. It's it's something. I mean, even look at the hardback without the the dust jacket. It's just so detailed, so beautiful. Here's some cool pictures of the family. I will show you this picture later with a little bit of a story behind it. But there's just so much information here. So many beautiful banjos. It's just, this is, you could spend forever looking through this thing and just discovering everything you could ever want, but will never be able to buy. <laughs> so, I mean, look, there's a two, two neck banjo there. That's crazy. Those old collections. So this is really second to none, even in his collection. There's, there's nothing that can beat this. Um, you'll see a, a poster later in this video. I think the poster is based off of this. It looks like it's the same design. So I think this is, this is what you'll see later is uh, 154 Peghead Beauties. It's on the front and the back. But 1001 Banjos is Samara Collection. This is the ultimate banjo book. After I got 1001 Banjos Samara Collection, I became aware of another less expensive book. It was actually earlier. It was published in 1984. It highlights the same collection. Well, I mean, an earlier, earlier iteration of the collection, obviously. It's a cheaper book. It's not done as well, but it's still done really well. That is Banjos, the Samara Collection. In the banjo community, it's really called the Red Book. This is a slipcase, and inside it, this is the first edition, inside it you have a Japanese supplemental book that has Japanese writing, and you have the book. Banjos, the Samara Collection, uh, and we'll go more into detail and look through this next. This is Banjo's A Smart Collection from 1984. This is really the first book included in this copy is the Japanese supplemental. Just has this information about, I can't read Japanese, but information about what's in this book, because this book is in English and Japanese. This is done like the guitar book, which you'll see smaller pictures, but really complete pictures. Has information about what what happened with these banjos, the history of the banjos. Very complete information. It's also done by Maker, so you can look through and there's some bigger pictures of all of his banjos together. This is really an amazing collection of banjos. So at this point, I had two books from Sumar's collection. I had the big book, 1001 Banjos, the Samara Collection, and I have the Red Book, Banjos, the Samara Collection. And as happens with, with collections, I discovered that there was a third book, and this book was known as the Brown Book. And this book was by far the most difficult to find. I had seen one picture of it. I thought that it was actually one of the other books, but without the, the dust jacket. Uh, but it was very, very hard to find. And, and not cheap. The other books previously had been published by Kodansha, a publishing company. This book is, I, I couldn't find publishing information on. This was published in 1993 after the big book. And this book is generally referred to as the brown book, but it's hard to find. It is done in the same style as the big book, but not quite to the level as the big book. This is called Banjo, the Samar Collection. 1920 to 1940, the brown book. So it's a paperback, it's thick, um, and we will look at that closer. It also has all these peg heads from banjos on the front and the back. So for Banjo, the Samara collection, there are only 250 of these books made. So they're 
much harder to find. I, I never got a full number on the red book, how many were produced, but this is, you know, a tenth of the number of books that were produced for 1001 Banjos. So it's, it's a much smaller group of books. Banjo, the Samara Collection. This is done in 1993, obviously. It's, this is done in the same style as 1001 Banjos, the Samara Collection. It specifically focuses on banjos from 1920 to 1940. Um, but again, just amazing setup here. The photography that went into this, the quality of the banjos, the quality of, of the photography, um, the books, just amazing stuff. There's, I said, 250 of these ones in existence. Pretty hard to find, pretty expensive, but um, just the kind of banjos you can find in here are amazing. Again, done by the, the maker of the banjo. Um, there's all this information you can see, serial number, um, the setup for the banjo. It's just it's just amazing information at your fingertips. And the, the banjos are just beautiful and um, you can't find a collection like this. It's just amazing stuff. So. so at this point I had all the banjo books of Akira Sumars I knew of. I had banjos, the Samara Collection from 1984. I had 1001 Banjos, the Samara Collection from 1993, and Banjo, the Samara Collection, 1920-1940 from 1993. I had all the Banjo books, but there was a, a relatively readily available book called Guitars, the Samara Collection. Samara had a lot of guitars, not, not quite to the level of the Banjo Collection, he was the Banjo player, but, um, you know, I said at that point, I already have all the banjo books, why don't I just get the guitar book? So I did. I found the guitar book. This is it. Guitars is Sumara Collection. This one's actually signed. Signed in 1988 when the book was published. There are 3,750 of these books produced. This is number 2,756. So it's, it's a numbered copy. It's actually, it's done very close to um, the same style as the 1984 copy of you know the first edition of banjos the smart collection so it, it's similar in size also by kadansha kadansha the publisher and guitars this is for, you know, there's the signature uh, and there's the family um collection of visuals or ukuleles in here i believe but different kinds of guitars over the years electric acoustic sought after guitars there's some very cool stuff in here i don't know much about guitars but I would imagine if Akira Sumar had it, it was a very good guitar. So um, it's pretty cool to look through. I think this is a really cool book for people who like guitars. And it's done by um, Guitar Maker. So kind of cool. So I had the instrument books. And... Um... I became aware of another book, and this is how collections work. I became aware of another book that I didn't have, that there were only 200 produced. And this was, the text was done by J.G. Jepson of Discography of L.A., and it was assorted by Akira Sumara. It's the Louis Armstrong Sumara Collection. And this is a little bit different. This is actually... You know, I, I guess it's it's music based. It's about Louis Armstrong, but it goes into some of the very rare records he has and other paraphernalia that has to do with Louis Armstrong. So I got that. This was published in 1989, and uh, goes into just another part of his collection. Now I I played trumpet growing up, so Louis Armstrong is cool for me to have. Here's a Louis Armstrong book. It's really. A lot of this book is pictures of labels of, I guess, sought after Louis Armstrong records. There are some other Louis Armstrong paraphernalia in here, but most of it is records. So I had the relatively expensive books of Sumar's collection. There were two left that I was aware of. They were pretty inexpensive. And easy to find. One of them was Okira Samaro's Kampo. This is how the Japanese updated traditional herbal medicine. Um, I haven't really read it. It's in English. This is from 1991. 
Um, there's not really great pictures or anything in it, but uh, this is kind of what Akira Samara was involved with in Japan. So I got that. And then the final book I got of his um, was also pretty easy to find, but it is Furo, The Japanese Trendy Bath Life. This is from 1992. So it's obviously dated. There are things that you'll see in here where you're like, yeah, I, I can do that. Like having a TV in your bathroom is not a big deal now that you have your phone everywhere and can get access to everything um, from your bathroom. But um, when this was made, these are some really interesting baths. So take a look at that. Now, Fur gives you a little idea of what the trendy bath life was in the early 1900s. Um, somebody taking a bath. Actually kind of hard to, I mean, there's part of a bathhouse. These are things that, you know, in 2022, not incredibly surprising. Um, but in the 90s, I think they were pretty, I mean, there's a pretty far out looking TV there in the bathroom. And I would have loved to have had a bathroom in the 90s and had a TV. There wasn't a whole lot of good stuff to watch, but. So I thought that was all the books. And then one day I was online and somehow I found out that there was a Sumara Collection ukulele uh, kind of pamphlet book. It's very thin. And this is it. This is the Extraordinary Ukulele. It's a Sumara Collection from Japan. And it looks like this was something that was available in Hawaii at the Honolulu Academy of Arts. Or was produced by the Honolulu Academy of Arts. And it looks like it was probably from... 1993. I had to pay a pretty hefty price for this and I haven't seen any other ones. I mean hefty price for the size. This is small. Um, but I haven't seen any other ones and, and I've never even really heard about it referred to besides this. So this is related to the collection. I don't believe this was produced by Sumara but it has to do with his ukulele collection. There's a ukuleles book. This just has pictures of ukuleles I'm guessing are from the collection that maybe they were showing in Hawaii. Here's a page that has all the different publications, some of which we're talking about or I'm showing you today. Um, but this is a pretty, pretty thin little example of ukuleles. Obviously, ukuleles are pretty big in Hawaii. So there's ukuleles. There's also banjo ukes that are small banjos played like ukulele. So I had the books, and then the question was, what else is there in this collection? Uh, I knew that he was a member of a band. Um, I knew that there were publications that discussed his collection. Uh, so I started collecting some of those. But one of the things that I got pretty early on was a poster associated with 1001 Banjos, a smart collection. And here it is. Let's see if I can show you it without the ring light. That's annoying. Um, <laughs> ring light. Mm. So this is called 154 Peghead Beauties. Um, it is really, I think, the end papers of 1001 Banjo's Smart Collection. It has a signature on there, which I think is a, a copy. Um, but there, there's the title of the book, 1004 from the book 1001 Banjos of Samara Collection. Sweet poster, pretty hard to find. The back of it lists um, the pegheads. The, the pegheads are numbered on the front and then it has a description of, of what each peghead is from, what kind of banjo. So I got this and I decided it was time to just go all out. Look for whatever else Kirisumara created related to his collections. Something I became aware of pretty early on were the existence of playing cards. And I first I, I was aware of one set, and then I found out there were actually two sets. Pretty hard to find, but I was able to track um, both sets down. And we'll take a closer look at them, but first you had Banjo Card. And I can't remember when these were produced. I think they were produced in the late 70s. So Banjo Card. And then the second one was Banjo Playing Card 2. And this was numbered out of 500. This was 332. Um, let's take a closer look at both of these collections. There's two decks in each one. All right, first up are 
well, here are the banjo cards. Banjo card, banjo card, banjo playing card two. Look at banjo card first, because it's the earlier one. Only one of the decks is open, but they're the same. And this has basically the peg heads. It has a list of the different banjos in it. Um, but it has these really cool peg head cards. I've never played with these. But um, just all different kinds. So some very fancy looking cards there. Two different packs. The other pack is still closed. It has a Japanese stamp on it, I guess. And then it has this list, which I'm not exactly sure what this is for. And then um, has a little booklet that talks about, or has a has a shot of each banjo and tells you which card it is. Diamond five, club five. So it's a full shot of the banjo that on the card you have the peg head for. And you'll see a lot of these, or most of these, maybe all of them, are four string banjos. So that came with it, banjos. Um, and, and in this box, whoop, in this box. The second deck, banjo playing card, number two, limited edition, 332 out of 500. This has, also has a, a book that gives you information about each banjo. Um, I believe this is done in the style of the red book. Um, but then it also has two packs. Each deck is different. This deck has, I believe, the, I think these are the Bacon and Day banjos. Um, slightly offensive pictures there. <laughs> but that's not something that he created. That's something that was just from his collection. So different kinds of banjos, Bacon and Days. Uh, very cool open back banjos. And then the other set, the other deck, are... S.S. Stewart Banjos. Same general style. Um, some very cool looking banjos in there. And again, all of this information is included in the other book that came with it. One thing about banjos is they have this kind of dark past. Not with how they were originally played, but there's this whole kind of side history of minstrel shows, which were very racist. Um, and the association that banjos have from minstrel shows. Um, the minstrel show organizers thought that because violins or fiddles or guitars were well known throughout the Western world, they didn't really show people um, what a slave would be playing. So they picked an instrument and really exaggerated the instrument, uh, the banjo, and had these offensive characters of slaves. And um, that's kind of where you get some of these, some of these graphics that are offensive. So um, this just has the information on the inside. Uh, about the uh, the decks. So I started looking into the story of El Dandies and Kirisumara's music, and I located CDs. This was actually the most recent CD I found, but this is the story of El Dandies, Volume 1. This is from 1991. Story of El Dandies, Volume 2. This is from 1993. Story of El Dandies, Special Band. This is from 2015. And then Ukira Samara's sings uh, Clancy Hayes, and this is from 2014. CDs, but there were a lot of records, so I started buying the records. I don't even have a record player, but I got the records. I don't know what order these went in, uh, but I'll just show them to you, and we don't have to get a whole lot of detail with the records because most of it's about listening to it. So this is Oh, Good Looking by the Storyville Dandies. Storyville Dandies plus one. I think that's plus one. Storyville Dandies, and I'm assuming that's Japanese. It also came with this um, Braille. Kind of cool. I don't know how to read Braille. Jamming Storyville Dandies. 
Storyville Dandies, the one year anniversary album. Palm Springs Yacht Club. Storyville Dandies, the 15th anniversary album. There's the band. A number of albums that were done um, in the same style as far as the, the covers go. But here's AT and Friends. I'm assuming that's a Curious Mar and Friends, Volume 1, 1961 to 1981. I don't know. This guy looks like ET. I don't know what he is, but he looks cool. AT and Friends, Volume 2, 1961 to 1981. AT and Friends, Volume 3, 1961 to 1981. I have two copies of that because one of these is signed. Or maybe not. Maybe it's not signed. But it came with a couple that were signed. Storyville Dandies in St. Louis. Do you know what it means to miss New Orleans? This one's signed in 1983. Storyville Dandies in St. Louis. This is a second copy. This one's not signed though. Storyville Dandies in concert. Hold that. Kill that and cook that tiger rag. Also signed the same version of that album there. So that was the music. I had the music. I had the CDs. What happened? Akira Sumara uh, lost this collection in the 90s, the early 90s. It was broken up. Some of it was sold off. Some of it was sent to museums. This amazing collection, especially the banjos, was broken up. And I found out about that from reading other materials about the collection. I had everything that Sumara had produced or was produced directly related to the collections that he had, but I wanted more information. There were some publications that discussed his collection over the years. And the first one I became aware of was the most recent. That was Fretboard Journal from 2009. And it talks about what became of the collection. It has some amazing pictures and it interviews a guy named Mac Yasuda. So here's here's just an example of the whole collection in their cases. Not even the whole collection, but some that were found and destroyed accidentally because they were just lost for a while. Some amazing pictures of the collection and also of Mac Yasuda with, with what he has. amazing banjos that's from 2009 i also got the banjo newsletter from 1993 that discusses the sumara banjo museum this is in black and white so it's not as impressive but uh, it's still cool to be able to read up on it and they did an article about uh this the collection in the museum that how's the collection uh, so there's a sumara collection this is from 1993 the most difficult one to find was a magazine that was no longer in circulation and, and there was no real way to find somebody that was connected to it. I couldn't. And that was International Banjo. And I eventually found one that was owned by a guy that lives in New Zealand. I traded him, I sent him a CD that he was looking for and he sent me his copy of International Banjo which talks about Akira Sumara's collection. It says Akira Sumara, Japan's foremost banjo collector. That, that was very cool to find. That was hard. This is from 1982. And on the banjo hangout, I had a group about 1001 Banjos of Sumara collection because it's a nice book, but it's harder to find. Or not necessarily hard to find, but hard to find cheap and impossible to find cheap. So people would ask you to look up stuff in the book for them. Um, I got in touch through that group with a guy named Shuji Ishikawa, who was friends or is friends with Akira Sumara. And we had some back and forth emails. He was very nice. And he sent me some Japanese magazines that, that mention Akira Sumara's collection. And they're, they're Japanese, so I can't read them. That was very cool of him. He also sent me pictures of him and Akira Sumara with different banjos and different situations. I bought a little album and I put them in the album and then wrote in this little area of what is written on the back of them. So that was very cool of Suji to send me. That's a nice part of my collection. 
what was cool, he's also put me in touch with Akira Sumara. And Akira Sumara, and I didn't know this was going to happen, Akira Sumara sent me two photographs that are actually from 1001 Banjos, the book. And here they are. It's the same picture, but from the front and from the back. And it even says on there, to Ryan regards from the front, to Ryan in reverse regards from the back. Uh, Mrs. Akira Sumara's wife and their their kid. So very cool. And inside uh, 1001 Banjos, um, these pictures also exist. And he sent and he signed it. So this is from uh, 2014. That was such a cool thing for me to get, and I wasn't expecting it. Uh, and he also sent me a letter that talks about the collection. Um, Two-page letter, and it's signed at the bottom. So that really topped off my Akira Sumar collection. Obviously, having watched this now, you've seen that this thing grew so much. And it didn't start out as the plan, but as with so many collections, as you find out, there's more and more that you don't have and it's relatively inexpensive to to add those pieces you want to have a more complete collection so that's that's my collection that's as complete as i can have it that i'm aware of um if there are other records or cds out there i don't know of them if there are other books i'm not aware of them either but this is a pretty complete collection i think and it was very cool of shuji ishikawa to get in touch with me and then eventually put me in touch with kuru sumara i really really value that connection and it was very great of Akira Sumar to reach out to me and send me the pictures and the letter because I that really I mean to have this collection then have the the actual creator of the collection send this um with something else now the amazing thing is like this collection um no longer exists in its entirety and even the books that were created I reached out to the publisher and documentation on those books um, was lost I think it was to a fire or something so you can't really even find all of this information in one place anymore you gotta have the book I've had professional banjo players reach out to me and ask me to see um, the book to check the book for their banjo because the serial numbers for each banjo are, are on the page and I've done that. I'll include a picture of Ned Luberecki, who's a professional banjo player. His banjo next to the picture of uh, his banjo from the Sumara collection. So his banjo is played a lot. A lot of people get to hear the sounds from a banjo that Kira Sumara owns. So check out this picture. So that's it. That's the collection. That's my Akira Sumara collection that's my sumar collection collection and i hope you enjoyed this tour it's been very different i've actually been waiting for that final cd volume one to come so i could do this because i wanted to have the complete collection to show you or at least as complete of a collection as i could so i hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions uh, let me know if you know of any other cure sumara banjo stuff out there besides the actual banjos uh, please let me know that too because you know, if there's anything that I don't have in my collection that still exists, I would love to add it. So thanks.